Hey guys, welcome back to Texas Family Life. My name is Christy. I am a mom of five and expecting number six. I'm going to show you today how to make cheesecake. Um, key lime cheesecake to be specific. And if you're a fan of cheesecake and you're kind of scared to make it, do not be. I want you to watch this and try it yourself. There's so many variations you can do. My favorite is to make little mini cheesecakes with chocolate chips in them and that is just so good. But my sister, my sister requested today that she get a lime cheesecake for her birthday, which is kind of a tradition. I've made it for her at least eight years in a row. I've made her this lime cheesecake. So it's so good. It's so easy. There is a lot of steps to it, but they're simple steps and it is so worth it. If you've never made your own cheesecake, I highly encourage you to try this. And if you haven't already, please do like and subscribe. And I want you to let me know in the comments below what kind of cheesecake have you made? Or after watching this, what kind are you gonna make? You can make blueberry cheesecake, chocolate cheesecake, raspberry cheesecake, like the options are endless. So watch this, give it a try. And I'm gonna show you how to do this. Okay, so first I'm going to grind up the two cups of the vanilla wafers. You can use graham crackers or anything you like. I did get vanilla wafers this time because I really like the way it tastes. So I'm gonna grind them up in here. You can put them in a baggie and roll them with a rolling pin. None of this has to be hard. You don't need any proper tools that you don't already have. So if you don't have um, a Cuisinart thing, you can do it by hand and it is still be so good. So try it. Don't let not having like fancy equipment deter you. So we're gonna put two cups in here and then we're gonna mix it with some melted butter to make the crust. All right, you're going to melt half a cup of butter, that's one stick, and you're going to mix that with the ground up cookies that you already did. All right, so for the cheesecake, you do need a spring form pan. It is a pan that you can take the edge off and pop the bottom out, and that makes it easier to remove the cheesecake. Otherwise, it's just gonna all stick. I always have a problem getting the cheesecake off the bottom of the pan. So you can butter it extra if you'd like. What I'm going to do today is cut out just a rough circle of parchment paper to put on the bottom of this. And then when the cake is done, you just slide it off. And that works quite well. And it doesn't alter the taste or anything of the cake. All right, so all put together, it stays together. And then you're gonna go ahead and put the circle in. You can go ahead and butter it as well. And I just, you can use oil or a spray pan. I like to just really use stick butter and rub around the insides. And then we're going to go ahead and take our cookie crumbs that we made and we're gonna mix it with the butter. Half a teaspoon of sugar and the butter that we melted before. I'm just gonna pour it all together and mix it with a fork. You don't want it to be too wet, but you don't want it to be too dry because you need to be able to press it into the bottom pretty evenly of the pan. Okay, so just a super rough circle. I'm gonna press it in. And then I'm going to go ahead and put some butter over it and around the edges.
And you're gonna add some zest of a lime. I have a lime zester here, but a lot of cheese graters come with a side that has zest on it. So I'm gonna just zest some into this. It's a little bit for flavor, but it's also for color and appearance. So it'll be nice to have these little green flakes in the cheesecake um, whenever you cut into it to eat it. So I'm going to zest probably two of these. It calls for two teaspoons, but I'm gonna just go ahead and see what it looks like and go from there. The oven is set to 350. I'm going to let this sit just for a little bit to let any bubbles come to the top and you can kind of shake it because the bubbles are going to be something that can cause your cake to crack as well. Some people will wrap the whole pan in foil and stick it in, I think, water, like a roasting pan with water in it. Is that called a bain marie? Oh, what's a bain marie? So it's kind of like a water bath. Um, I've done that and I almost always end up with soggy cheesecake. So I'd rather, the whole point of that is to keep your cheesecake from cracking. And I'd rather have a crack in my cheesecake than to have, I'd rather have a crack in my cheesecake than a soggy cheesecake, because that's pretty gross. And like I said, it's, it's happened multiple times. So if you can find a big enough piece of foil to wrap it up, then I do recommend the water baths because it keeps it moist. The thing I am gonna do though is I am gonna fill a pan with some water and put it in there because it'll help keep the oven moist and keep the cake moist. But then it's not submerged in water anyway. I'm gonna go ahead and do that and we'll bake it for about an hour, hour and a half. And your cheesecake is ready to eat now. Just don't drop it. Ah. Bye, guys. Have a great rest of your week. Thank you for watching.